Hello, everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to recap and explain an Australian alien sci-fi film called Occupation Rainfall. This film is a sequel to the 2018 film Occupation. I have explained it in my last video, if you have not seen it, then do watch it. Because this film is a continuation of that film. The film begins with Amelia's voiceover where she says the aliens have been on Earth for the past two years now. After the first alien mother ship arrived, the invader ship also arrived. For two years, the war has been going on all the continents of the Earth. Some fractions of the aliens joined their hands with humans to end this deadly war. But it's not working. So, basically, aliens have now occupied Australia. Humans are running their own guerrilla war. Now we see an American named Bud Miller who is leading Matt Simmons and his team on a secret project. The American scientists came to know about it in the year 1966. They called it Operation Rainfall. They extracted it from the ocean bed. The story of the film now starts 72 hours before this incident. Sydney was now recaptured by the aliens. Here their gigantic floating tank towers were acting like an iron dome. They had a sizable ground force as well. The Australian army was weak and bleak, a man named Abiram was in charge of whatever was left of it. Wing Commander Hayes was in charge of the Air Force. These people were rescuing survivors in Sydney. Under the leadership of squadron leader Robin, several jets attacked those alien towers. We see Matt, Marcus and a team composed of aliens and humans, who break into an alien ship. They rescue a few humans and aliens. As they were gathering intelligence, they were attacked by one big alien commander. His body armor was distinct, and he was tall. Matt's team fought with him and killed him. Matt grabbed his helmet and a memory drive which had lots of information. Amelia and Abraham rescue some friendly aliens who were against this war. Amelia gets intel from them that the aliens were preparing for something called rainfall. That's why their elite commanders were here. Here we see an alien named Gary who has been fighting with humans for the last two years. He also learned English and was a trusted warrior of humans. Gary says that the elders are like the prime decision makers of aliens. They have an elite protective warrior force called Kali. They seldom take part in wars, if they are here, then aliens are planning something big. These guys arrive at the base with alien refugees. On the other hand, Commander Hayes orders the Air Force to bomb the alien colonies, as in his eyes all the aliens were enemies. Hayes at the base says, humans are losing the war in Europe as well as in America. Nuclear weapons were deployed, but they missed the targets. Sydney has gone out of our hands, aliens have huge firepower here, unfortunately, we must retreat from here. Amelia, in this meeting, says we have received clear intel that aliens are searching for something called rainfall. Kalis are behind it. The helmet which Matt brought here belongs to one of the Kali. In his memory drive there is a mention of rainfall. Here Captain Wessex says, rainfall is the code word for the Central Australian military base of Pine Gap. It was made in the 60s. Maybe aliens are referring to that. Abraham now orders Matt and Gary to go there for investigating. For those who don't know, Pine Gap is famous as the Australian Area 51. In the 60s CIA had made its base here and used to collect the data of this part of the world from satellites. The Pine Gap is in the middle of the desert of Central Australia, which is about 1,700 miles from Sydney. It was not safe to go there by road. That's why Gary suggested the idea of using alien creatures named Vox. These creatures were loyal like dogs, strong like horses, and used to eat everything like goats. I mean even the metals. This three-in-one combo offer made them perfect for a desert ride. Alien Gary tells goodbye to his wife and kid. Matt and Amelia were now separated. Matt was not happy with Amelia's peace deal, he did not believe in the theory of sharing Earth with aliens. Now ladies and children from Sydney started leaving in buses, it was in charge of Dennis, whom we saw in the previous film as well. The attack started on the bus as soon as they left the base. Matt and Gary's van also comes under attack. The action scenes here are really good. After many years, such high-intensity warfare is seen in a movie. Now squadron leader Robin covers these buses from her jet. She also knocks down an alien plane. The aliens' ground force started attacking the army base. The army started fleeing. The soldiers didn't allow the friendly aliens to flee with them on Hayes's order. This includes Gary's wife and child. Here Amelia protested and took them with her. 
Later in the sky came the alien colony ship which dropped a Moab of their version on Sydney. Moab means mother of all bombs. The whole of Sydney was destroyed, the remaining humans also died. Let me tell here that the aliens were in the millions. They all came from different galaxies with their technology. These alien colony ships were huge ships that were now landing on every continent of the Earth. Amelia's brother Marcus sneaked himself in on Matt's van. Seeing him there, Matt scolds him. He asked him to leave, but Marcus refused. Later we see these three riding the Vox, they arrived at a place which looked like an oil digging site. Here Gary says that we have known about this planet for many years, it has many stories, and it is absolutely true like stories. Amelia Abraham and the rest of the refugees now arrive at the Blue Mountain base, which was the last base of the Australian army. This base was deep under large mountains, hence they were getting natural protection. Its in charge was Commander Hayes. At the arrival all the friendly aliens were taken apart for verification. Amelia had no trust in Hayes at all. She confronts him as he was the one who stopped rescuing aliens. To which Hayes says this is just a protocol of humans first. Later he takes Abraham and Amelia on a tour where the Air Force has upgraded its ammunition, planes with alien tech. This was truly the last mega buildup. Later. Matt Gary and Marcus were in a place where alien soldiers were hunting humans. Gary steals their flying tank from them by deceiving them. He started shooting down another alien tank with Marcus. As these two were running away in aliens' tanks, alien fighter planes attacked them. Marcus killed a couple of alien planes. Here Matt and one Kali commander were fighting, hand to hand. Kali drags Matt's head to his tank's exhaust fumes which started burning Matt's face. Just then one Vox ran toward Matt, and it attacked Kali commander. It took him for lunch. These Kali commanders were also searching for rainfall. Here we also get to know the backstory of Commander Hayes. Aliens had kidnapped and tortured him with his wife. His wife was killed in that process, there were many officers in this base who had gone through this torture. This war was personal for all of them. At night Matt, Marcus and Gary were camping on an open field. Here Marcus was feeding chocolates to Vox. Just then, Vox started shouting in fear. Gary also stood up in a panic and said Zulik is here. Zulik was an alien apex predator animal whose favorite was Vox. Zulik was a dinosaur-like big creature, aliens buff these animals with them as well. This Zulik attacks everyone, Gary and Marcus fire guns at it. Kalis blew up the alien tank. A sword bowl erupts between Gary and another Kali. Matt was firing heavily at Zulik when suddenly he ran out of fire power. Zulik jumped on him, and it was killing him when a huge blast occurred. It killed Zulik. Upon seeing there, Peter and Bella who fired an alien bazooka gun. We have seen these guys in the previous film. Dennis and Amelia had not seen the friendly aliens for two days now, so they doubted whether they were alive or not. Denise asked her girlfriend Robin about it, but she doesn't give much of an answer. Dennis hesitantly stole her security pass. We now see Matt and Gary in Peter's village, after the last fight in the last film, Peter and his family settled at this remote location. With time, some other people also joined him, it was a remote village. They were living here peacefully. Peter, Ginny, Bella and Marcus all were meeting after two years, they all had lunch. Matt explains his mission. Amelia now enters the secret lab with a security pass, where she finds the bioweapon that Matt and Jackson stole from the aliens in the last film. In the last film, Colonel Grant thought that this bioweapon was for humans, but it was actually for aliens. It was a chemical with which aliens could easily be killed. Hayes and his team were trying to convert it into gas and were making weapons out of it. They were conducting experiments on aliens and alien animals. Gary's family was also here. Amelia was shocked to see this. She was quickly arrested by Hayes' men. On the other hand, all the villagers in Peter's village were screaming, shouting in front of Peter's house. They were angry that Gary was here. Peter makes them understand that Gary was a member of the resistance, he was fighting to end the war. But people were not in a mood to listen, they had become blind in their enmity. They now started to attack Peter and his family as well. Gary stopped them and said that if you guys want me, then I am present. If you want revenge for your loved one, then take it on me, not on this family. Basically, he was ready to sacrifice himself. People started beating him anyway as they didn't believe this English-speaking alien. 
Anyway, Matt jumps into this, shoots a bullet in the air, and drives everyone away. Peter lauds Gary for his courage and thanked him. He and Bella also offer their help in this mission. Amelia was brought before Hayes where Abraham also arrives. Amelia tells Abraham about everything where Hayes calls that bio-weapon a tactical weapon. But the catch here was that this weapon was going to kill all the aliens, both friendly and enemies. It was a genocidal weapon. Hayes was convinced that there could be no peace with the aliens because they did not deserve it. He and his followers were fighting with the intention of dying or killing aliens. Whereas Amelia and Abraham wanted to save the human race. With peace, the human race could survive for many centuries. Otherwise, they would disappear like dinosaurs. Because of this difference of opinion, a civil war in the army erupts. Everyone points guns at each other. The Captain Wessex finally arrested Hayes and his followers, and announced Abraham as the new charge. Then after some time, three big alien floating tower ships arrived at the Blue Mountain base. They started bombing it. Peter, Bella, Marcus, Matt and Gary finally reach the Pine Gap. Here they meet two guys, CIA agent Bud Miller and an alien, Steve. The aliens now contact Amelia by hijacking the base's communication network. They wanted to talk about the peace deal. Amelia and Abraham went for a talk where Captain Wessex gave them a cover. An elder lady from Aliens came forward, she said to Amelia that many of my people have changed their loyalty in your name. They have chosen to fight with you in your name. We left our world as it got destroyed, we needed this planet to survive. Yet many of my people are dying. Your kind had done a lot of atrocities on us, for a peace deal to sustain somebody must be held accountable. The elder alien held Amelia accountable, she was about to insert her spear into Amelia when Abraham pushed her away. He got killed instead. Here the alien's plan was to kill Amelia by deceit. The fight between humans and aliens resumes as soon as Abraham dies. Hayes and his followers recapture the base when one soldier released Hayes from captivity. The fighting was raging outside. Hayes now ordered a missile attack fitted with that bioweapon. Aliens started hammering Blue Mountains with their tower ships. At the other end, Bud Miller takes Matt and his team to show the Project Rainfall. It was nothing but a big asteroid. Scientists found it at the bottom of the ocean. Which was fired by aliens from their planet 65 million years ago. It cleaned the dinosaurs from the Earth. Alien tech was embedded with it. Miller said that if aliens were looking for it, then maybe they were again planning to use this. Their alien colony ships certainly have the capacity to lift this from the Earth to space. If they were successful, then the game is over. The North American cities were destroyed like these space asteroids. Matt now contacts Commander Hayes from the computers kept there and explains the whole thing. Hayes comes up with an idea, he wanted to embed that bio-weapon in this asteroid. As soon as the aliens picked it, he intended to make a blast so that everyone there could die. But the catch was that every friendly aliens were also going to die due to it. Hence, on hearing this, Gary burst into anger, he broke that computer. As with the Hayes plan, Gary's family was in danger. A little fight broke between Matt and Gary here. As soon as Gary's hand touched that big asteroid, it got activated. Steve and Miller were in O as this asteroid was lying duck for nearly 50 years. Steve says Gary must be Kali since only Kali's DNA can activate this. Marcus and Peter pacify Matt as they also thought Hayes's idea as genocidal. Gary admits that he was once a Kali but not anymore, his loyalty is with the peace deal. Now these people plan to blow up this asteroid right here. On the other hand, the team of Amelia and Captain Wessex were fighting on the base, Ribbon was attacking from the air with fellow fighter pilots. Amelia and Denise now came to the radio station and hijacked all communication. She begs Ribbon not to fire those missiles. As that missile was like a gas bomb, all the aliens who came close to it were going to die, friendly and non-friendly. Amelia begged her to think of the friendly aliens imprisoned in the base, there were ladies and children. Hayes meanwhile ordered Ribbon not to listen to Amelia's words, he gave the direct order of attack. Ribbon was in conflict, hence she cancelled her mission. But a second fighter pilot obeys that order and fires a missile at the tower. It hits the target. All the aliens fighting in the open space are affected by this gas. As they were suffering, an army ground force started killing them. At Pine Gap a team of Kali started attacking Matt and his team. Some aliens informed the location of the rainfall to the elder lady, who sends a backup ship. 
Hayes's followers arrive to attack Amelia, whom Dennis kept engaged. Amelia goes to rescue all the aliens imprisoned in the lab. Then Hayes came there and ordered everyone to be killed. A fight ensues between Amelia and him as she tricks and locks him in a room. That was an airtight room where she now released the same gas. Hayes dies here by suffocating. The Captain Wessex asked the rest of the Hayes followers to surrender, but they didn't do it. The aliens now counter-attack and start destroying the Blue Mountains with all their firepower. Amelia, Dennis, Captain Wessex, along with all the remaining human and alien refugees, started running away from here as well. Robin and the team gave them cover. A large alien colony ship arrived at the Pine Gap. It started lifting the entire base with that asteroid. Matt, Gary and Bella were caught up in this. Miller and Peter were left behind. Peter started crying here as Bella was gone. Later we see Amelia and the team coming to Peter's village where Peter tells her about Matt. The elder lady had now found the asteroid and this is where the film ends. Lastly, we see the title of Rainfall Chapter 1. Meaning, there will be the next film in this series. So, friends, this was the story of the film Operation Rainfall movie. This movie is great, full of action. I guess money has been shed like water to make it. This is a proper entertainment film. It had a lot of improvements as compared to the first film. If you have liked the video, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Take care.